Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everyone. So many of us want to be in good, positive, fruitful relationships. Doesn't always happen. Especially you talk to people and they say, I don't know what it is. I keep finding the same guy or same girl. It's just, they, I don't know why they keep showing up. Maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe you're not ready for the right type of relationship. Have you prepared for the right person to show up? We're going to talk about that today and so much more. He's somebody that works with people all the time, moving their lives forward, realizing these things, call them the aha moments. He's Chris Chris Barthelme. He joins us today, and he is the CEO and head coach of True North Motivation. Welcome, Chris. How are you doing today? doing pretty good. It's Monday. I got through the day so far and uh, it's going to be a good week. Awesome. What do you hear from people that are looking for those those relationships and they're not showing up? They end up in the same habits and patterns. And you kind of hit on there in the beginning. You're saying that, you know, I keep finding the same girl. I keep finding the same guy. They keep ending up in that same type of relationship and they really don't understand why they do. And so what my relationship prep coaching does is really we, we look to understand ourselves first, right? And then we learn how to project ourselves out there better and then communicate better. So it's, it's a self project and then relate kind of concept to really understand where we stand first. So that way we can attract the right partner to us. And it doesn't necessarily mean a partner in that regard. It could be a business relationship, right? Absolutely. These, these concepts, I use relationships because the most relatable, not all of us are in business. Not all of us have big friends groups, but what ends up happening is, is because the most emotion is involved in relationships, there's the highest degree for failure. We have a tendency to get more triggered in those types of relationships. So sure. it can expose some things that friendships don't expose some things that family uh, relationships don't really expose. So by attacking that one first, we actually see a trickle down effect into the rest of our relationships. It permeates into friendships, business partnerships, family relationships, because all of the concepts we use there in romantic relationships really do translate to everything in life. Where do we usually go wrong? <laughs> um, not understanding ourselves first. And to be honest, mm -hmm. like we so often I get new clients in and they're hard charging. They're wanting to get into a relationship and they're like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. And I'll just ask some simple questions, you know, like, mm -hmm. okay, what are your needs? And at first glance, they can usually give me a good, healthy amount of needs, but then I'm like, okay, well, what supports that? You know, like the big one that I always use with people is, is a lot of people use touch as one of their needs. I need to have physical touch in my relationship. I say, okay, well, what makes that touch effective? Like if you're a woman and I walk up to you and I just graze your arm, that's touch. You're telling me that's what you need. You should feel loved right away. And that's when the aha moment, they don't know how to explain what it is about a man touching them that makes them, it makes it that received well, essentially, and for them to feel loved out of it. So we start exploring the depth of that word that need, right? We, we figured out, we name it. We use words to name the emotions, the feelings, and all of those things that supplement that one need. And when we do, we start making connections to why we have been in certain behavioral patterns, why we seek out validation in certain ways, why we look for a certain type of partner that has a certain quality about them. And we start to realize where we go wrong pretty quickly when we do that. It's my belief that everybody should have this training. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I was just having a conversation the other day that when it comes to the emotional side of humans, we don't have any training. We go to grade school, we learn about math and science, and we do get into sociology and psychology, but we scratch the surface. We don't really talk emotions. We talk the big concepts, but we don't get down with the nitty gritty with this stuff. And we don't really understand ourselves. And we're just thrown to the worlds to date. Like, like just go out and date. You'll figure it out. Well, that's about as effective as saying, go find a car. You'll find the right one going to a car lot. That salesman is going to sell you a car you don't want because you're not ready and prepared for it. You know, nor do you know anything about the car, nor do you know really anything about yourself to your point before it's often been said before you can give love, you need to love yourself. Is that true? I think you need to learn how to accept yourself first. 
And I think that's what love really translates into acceptance when it comes down to it. When we don't like things about ourselves, we end up triggered in relationships. We end up lashing out at those people. We end up projecting ourselves in our own hurt and not wanting to accept those negative parts about us. And so when we talk about love, we use that word unconditional, right? Unconditional means I'm going to accept you no matter what you do, no matter what you are and all those things. And so we have to learn to accept ourselves before we can even accept love from anybody else. So we may have a great partner in front of us, but we don't accept it's even real because we can't accept the fact that we have negative things about us. So it really comes down to acceptance. And you're right. It's self-love, but in the form of acceptance, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, 100%. Uh, how does it start? Now, for me, in my journey, hypnotherapy was effective. Connecting, figuring out the past and then the present. And as I learned along the way, even talking with people like you, that a lot of what we're doing today is from our childhood. That's how we're we're attacking these relationships, figuring it all out. We're acting like kids. L like Literally, our subconscious is acting like a child because we didn't change those things. Uh, and those things, I mean, you know, the things that don't support us, the negative things that we may have experienced might not have been a bad situation. It just, you heard something as a child, you internalized it. And then that's your compass for, you know, let's say part of a relationship. Do you believe it goes back to our childhood? A lot of this? Absolutely. Almost all of, well, it can go back to childhood or any intermediate trauma that we've been through. Sure. Um, and something that we didn't learn how to internalize it and regulate that emotion. Um, part of the, the next portion of my course, after I get them prep for relationship is starting to get into emotional intelligence. And a lot of that is looking back at why we make the decisions we do. And it really is tied to childhood or trauma. So we may have a great, you know, childhood with great parents that were very healthy, but then somewhere in there, we ended up in a relationship with somebody that was abusive. We ended up with a narcissist or a physically abusive person, and they'll damage us to the point where we don't know what's healthy anymore. Because mm. they've skewed our reality into what we think is healthy because those type of people can manipulate and control us into where we don't know which way is up anymore. We don't know if what our we saw with our parents was healthy or what this person is saying is healthy. So it goes back to anything that skews our perception of how we should react in different situations. So once we've understood ourselves, then we start looking at emotional intelligence and how do we relate that to other people? And a lot of times, again, it does go back to childhood, how we related to our parents, how we got validation from them. And so we look at all of those and we say, how are we using those in the future? And then we try to change those behavior patterns if we're doing it in a way that is literally attracting the wrong partner over and over again. My friend just went through a divorce and this was his situation. And I know him, uh, I know his ex, I, I know the family dynamics, but the bait the laser in on this her father left abruptly when she was a child i don't know how old you know that maybe sounds like three or four and in her first marriage she cheated and in second marriage with with my friend she just said i want to get divorced that's it shocked the entire family shocked the kids he everything um and as he traced it back, he found out that she was cheating. So he should have picked up on it the first time. And it turns out that now he, he showed me pictures. She is with a man. And by the way, her father passed away a couple of years ago uh, from cancer. She's with a man now that looks like her father. Same ethnic background, same interests, like motorcycles, same every, it's it's him. He, it's it's like he's back. So, you know, when I look at, at my friend, it's it's pretty clear to me that she didn't take she didn't figure herself out. She had I hate saying this, but it's so true. Daddy issues. She never resolved whatever those issues were. Uh, face value in this. Is that kind of what it looks like? And does that happen a lot? It, it does. Um, so all of us have an attachment style, they call it, right? And how we sure. attach in healthy relationships or in relationships in general. Sure. And a lot of times when we have 
it goes back to your parents. So for me, mine would be how I attached with my mother. That kind of defines how I'm going to attach in relationships going forward. It's usually the opposite parent, basically, of whatever sex you are. So if you're a male, it's going to be how you attach to your mother. If you're a woman, it's how you attach to your father. And if you didn't get basically validation and soothing properly, and they didn't validate your emotions, you end up in either an anxious, avoidant, an anxious and avoidant, or known as the disorganized style, or you can end up in a secure style. And basically, when when they end up in those positions, a lot of times, when they go back to people that remind them of their father, they're trying to validate themselves to their father through that person is what they're doing. And so they're they're seeking out that validation to, to gain worth. They don't have self-worth because they were abandoned. Because they were abandoned, they're trying to fill that void that, that father left for them. And they continue to chase it until they understand where it came from. And a lot of times it's just really searching yourself and understanding it's okay that that wound is there. It's okay that it happened. And then discovering that you don't have to be tied to that anymore. You can say, I can have healthy relationships if I attach the right way. And that's where I use another tool called the uh, relationship attachment model, which is, it's a bunch of sliders basically. And on one side, you have um, the no slider, then you have trust, then you have rely, then you have um, commitment and then touch, right? And so if we use those sliders properly, if we look at it as a scale from left to right, the no slider goes up, say, two points. That means that the trust slider can only go up as much as the, the one to its left, the no slider. And so what we find a lot of times is these anxious attachment styles with these women and men that have had wounds from childhood is they move that trust slider up too fast. They move that commitment slider, that touch slider up faster than they know somebody because they're trying to get that wound to be soothed. But when we slow down the dating process, we allow our brain to process through each one of the dates as we're going through them. We can see what's actually going on and why we're doing some of these. They're not really aggressive behaviors and they're, but they're not really, they're not attention seeking, but they are in a way. And we realize that we're doing those behaviors to soothe the child. And when we stop that behavior, that's trying to soothe the child, we get to see dating for what it really is. Mm. We see the red flags way ahead of time because we're slowing the process down by allowing our brain to analyze it in real time instead of getting so hungry for that dopamine of that next text message, that next date, that next kiss. You know, we're, we're not getting into that part of it. We're analyzing what's actually going on. And we realize our connection isn't really there like we thought it was with somebody because we've slowed the process down. We've allowed the dopamine to wear off as we start thinking through things. Ring, ring the Chris bell. <laughs> Cause that, <laughs> that is, you got it. I feel that is so important. And even if, even in the instance of my friend, when she revealed his ex revealed that she cheated, she cheated with her female best friend. And it, and it was, it seemed like it was a one-off situation. She was quote bored uh, with her husband at the time. Um, but he didn't see it. And I know why because of just what you said we ignore the red flags because we want the dopamine hit we want like oh this is great uh, oh they did what ah, blah, blah, blah. no problem's not gonna happen to me blah, 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 and on and on and on i love what you said in soothe the child that says a lot and is it true that we always or often go back on things that are comfortable like for example Let's say you're dating a bunch of people and anxious people always show up. I was anxious. I don't know what it is. Is everybody anxious? Yes. There's a lot of anxiety in the world now. I get that. But it just seems like they got a lot of anxiety. What's going on? But it turns out that your mother, let's say if you're a man, your mother had a lot of anxiety. Is it is it reasonable to think that, oh, okay, that's why those people show up because you attracted them because you're comfortable in dealing with that? Does that make sense? It's not, it's not that it's comfortable. It's controllable in your mind. So when we look at when people do that and they end up in that same pattern where they continually be around an avoidant or they continue to be around anxious people, what ends up happening is they know the outcome before it happens in their mind. They know what's going to happen. So they know what reaction they can get when they go to somebody that's secure. They're like, they're used to, I say this and they distance themselves. 
So when they say that to a secure person, they stand right there and say, okay, I still love you. They don't know what to do. They're, they literally, they, that kind of reaction can send them into fight or flight. And then they're all of a sudden like, I don't know how to deal with this healthy emotion that this person is giving me. And so then they lash out and they actually will self self sabotage that relationship because they don't know how to handle it. But again, it goes back to, they don't know their self. If they knew that that was the problem, mm. then we'd be able to tell them, look, you need to lean into that uncomfortable feeling and just sit there with that person that is telling you they love you and they, they accept you either way. And as we do that, we learn how to sit there with that emotion, with that person that's being healthy with us. We suddenly realize that we're not, we don't have to run anymore, that we don't have to sue the child, that this person is actively giving us love with us, without, without us having to give something in return. They're not asking for us to scratch their back so that they can love us. They'll just love us no matter what. And so once we do that, we can start pulling ourselves out of that, I'm going to go after anxious people attachment because we can control it. We can start moving into things that we can't control because we understand it's okay and that we can find love that way, you know? I think we said the same thing in that the the comfortable, you know, you, you know the outcome. Maybe you don't consciously know the outcome, but you know the outcome. You're 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 good with it because I've done this before. Yeah, it's and then you just chalk it up to uh there's another one with anxiety. We're using that as a hypothetical. Why do those use that as an example? It could be anything. It could be the the woman that's always uh, dating the the bad boy, whatever it is. Why do those people always show up? Obviously, somehow we're attracting them. Do you believe in energy that we're transmitting something energetically and pulling them to us? I do. Um, Because you can see it in a lot of my clients over time. So they'll come to me a lot of times in a certain kind of state where they're in that cycle, right? They're dating anxious people. And as we start to build their confidence level, I believe that that's the project part I was talking about, how we project ourselves out. And I'm not talking about how we project with our words. I'm just talking about our physical appearance, right? When you have more confidence, you stand taller. Your chest is out a little bit more. Your shoulders are back. They're not rolled forward. Your head is held high. You're, you're smiling more. You, that's when people say, man, you're glowing, right? Because you've got that confidence. That confidence comes from knowing who you are, though. So when they end up in that position where they keep going after the anxious person, the energy they're putting out into the world is stating, I'm vulnerable, come after me. So yes, the bad boy that can hurt you is going to come after you because you're projecting out that you're horribly vulnerable at that point, that, you know, that he can take advantage of you, that he can manipulate you. So that's, that's what the people that like narcissist and bipolar people, they tend to go after those weaker people because they're easily controlled at that point. So that's their in. So when we project out a healthier energy from confidence, we tend to repel those people, right? That on the surface look really good, but they won't be attracted to us because they can't manipulate us. We attract a healthier partner that understands that we're going to be a bunch of work because we're a human being and that's how relationships are. Whereas the anxious person, that's a bad boy, right? The, the biker guy, right? He, he understands that he can control you. He knows how to do it. And it usually comes from a place where he's not very confident himself. So he goes for the, the weaker mm. person, if that makes sense. Wow. I, it's my belief too, that this can even, this energy that we put out there can even go through dating apps. People can pick up on your energy and it's not just, you know, face value because you don't know what you're getting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pictures are pictures. Obviously, if you're somebody, a woman looking for the man on the bike and he might have pictures, I'm not talking about that. Just you, know, you don't know somebody, let's go back to the anxiety example. You don't know that they have anxiety, but it just shows up. I believe that, that that's, you know, talking to friends and, and just analyzing some of this uh, over some time, that that energy that you put out there can even transcend. Energy knows no time and space. That can happen that way through apps as well. So for somebody to work with you, Chris, how does it work? Is it somebody that's looking for better relationships? Um it, could it even be somebody who's in a relationship? Things are okay, but they want to up their game even at work in those types of relationships. It's both. Um, I get I get people from um, pretty much all like the three, like just out of a relationship and want to know what mistakes they made. So they look back on the relationship and we can improve 
And that's a great time to do it right out of a relationship. Cause then we can look back and we have fresh data, fresh. so to speak, and where we made our mistakes. I have people that are like, I've been in a bad dating cycle where it's like, I date a guy for a week and then it fizzles out. I date a guy for a week and it fizzles out, or I get the same guy over and over. Or the other one is like, I've, I've got into this relationship and I feel like I'm not putting my best foot forward and I don't want to lose this person. How do I project out better energy? How do I communicate? How do I relate to this person on a better level? And how do I know that this person is healthy for me? Like I'm at that sticking point sometimes where people are like, they, they giving me all the green flags, but I feel like I'm missing something. Help me to discern what is really going on here. And so in all three, all four of those scenarios, we just, we sit and we talk, we, we go over everything. We talk about how the, the vibe is, so to speak, as I call it, going back and forth. How does the texting, have you guys had any ruptures, you know, fights, I call them ruptures. Um, but yeah, they're fights. Like, have you guys had any fights? What were the nature of those fights? You know, we analyze all of those things and we look for behavioral patterns. We look for you starting to do the same thing over every time he does this, you do this. Every time she does this, you do this. And we analyze, well, you keep getting the same result. What can we do different that might get a different result? You know, a lot of uh, people that I get are usually anxious attachment style. And the, the classic sign is, as soon as they put a text out there that's kind of vulnerable, right? The, the person doesn't respond immediately and they start bombing them with texts left mm. and right, one after another, right? And we look at that behavior and I tell them, I said, do you realize that you're, you're now projecting onto them, whatever hurt you have from your attach, attach, anxious attachment style, you're projecting it onto them. And then you're making them withdraw, even if they're not an avoidant attachment style. So what can we do behaviorally here? That's not going to be in that same, that same pattern. And every time I get them, I say, look, send that text, wait 24 hours, as painful as it is, wait 24 hours. And the end result usually ends up in this extremely healthy conversation at the other end of it. And it usually doesn't take the 24 hours. That person will respond. And usually they'll be like, I'm so sorry I didn't respond fast because it's in our nature to not hurt other people, right? But when you start bombing them with text, they get on the defensive. So if you allow them that space to be able to communicate back to you, they're not defensive. So we change that behavior pattern by saying, Every time I text, he doesn't respond. I bomb him with text and he always hates me for it. Okay, well, let's change your behavior pattern. And that's the simplest way to really do it is have those moments where I can see it with a client, what they're doing, and then just redirect that behavior so that way we're healthier in how we're interacting. And everybody has their own style, like you said, attachment style. And and also, even when it comes to, to texting, some people will not confront the other person with their feelings, but they'll do it this way. And that's a whole other situation. Uh, this is great. <laughs> it's a great conversation today. And so it's everything. Relationships it really are, yeah, we're we're social creatures. Relationships are so important. And uh, we didn't get the manual. Nobody told us how to do it. It's <laughs> we're work works in process, but if we don't know what to process, we're never gonna we're never gonna move it forward. Uh, Chris, how do we start the whole process with you? Okay. You can find me at uh, tncoachingcollective.com. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at true North motivation. That's my motivational speaking. Um, it, it, it's basically a bunch of reels and stuff about emotions I have been through. So you can kind of see who I am and how I've processed through a lot of this, because I'm not just a coach. Like I always believe that coaches are the ones that have done the work, right? You've got, you know, those who can't, teach and those who do coach essentially like I've, I've been there i've done that i've gone through all this stuff myself and i'm helping others to do it so at true north motivation on instagram or tncoachingcollective.com on the internet i would love to if we get a chance to get together next time to go into your your history and your background as far as you want to go and what you've learned along the way. Happy to share if you want to hear as well. It's it's a journey we're all on, but we learn. And I feel everybody's got a story and that's how we learn. We learn from each other's stories. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Hey, Chris, great having you on here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll be right back. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.